if you continue to foster, create, maintain a relationship that has more, oxyto more stress than it does oxytocin, it's going to be impossible to help your child to heal and move forward. Your child will grow older. Your child will get bigger. They will get stronger. Sometimes they'll get smarter or more savvy, but they will not heal emotionally. And we don't want that for our children. We want emotional healing for our children. We want our children to go into adulthood with some semblance of, of self-understanding, with, with security and relationship. We want them to be able to have oxytocin driving them and interrupting their stress when they experience it. That way when they deal with their asinine boss or, or they're, they're, they're faced with a problem in their relationship or they have children and they're having problems, they can handle that stress without reacting and, and flying off the handle or, or quitting job after job after job or being in relationship after relationship after relationship. That's what we want. And that's what we get when we operate from an oxytocin-rich perspective. Hope that makes sense. All right, I was talking about the Great Behavior Breakdown. That was uh, the book I had come out not long ago. Helene, if you're in California, Helene's going to be teaching the Great Behavior Breakdown two-day intensive and certified instructors course. If you're in, you don't even have to be in California. As far as I'm concerned, book a ticket. I mean, July 9th and 10th, you still got time. You can come to the two-day intensive. Helene's going to take you through two days, very intense, very emotional. She's going to help you to understand what it takes to go in and create healing through the most severe behavior. She's going to lead you through that step by step. And this is, this is happening in Fresno, California. And then if you want to become a certified instructor, you sign up for a third day. So she's going to be there for a third day. She's going to tack it on. Hang on just a moment. I got my, my six-year-old Marley looking at me for a little oxytocin kiss before she goes to bed. One moment. <laughs> okay, she didn't want to say goodnight to everybody. So if you want to become a certified instructor, you want to start your own business, you want to make a difference in an existing agency, you want to become the go-to expert in your area and join others who are creating a love revolution, then sign up for that third day. Become certified. Understand what that's all about. And you can actually, I think Helene has made it possible for 10 people that if you can save $147 off of off of the course of all of this, you use this coupon code. No one else is getting this coupon code. All right, this is GBB Intensive 147. So when you go to postinstitute.com forward slash GBB, use this code right here. This is a coupon code. GBB Intensive 147. I don't know if there's any spaces in that or not. So play with yeah, it when you put it in. GBB Space Intensive okay. 147. Okay, it is a one four seven. So the next, the first ten people who sign up can use this code. You get one hundred and forty seven dollars off. That's wild. You can become certified. You know that that's certified at three hundred fifty dollars. You get the instructor's manual. You get the participants' manuals. You get the outline. You get all this good stuff. And then also, Helene is throwing in the uh, her, another event that she's going to be doing in Fresno. You attend either of these events, you can come to her out of control seminar for free. And that's also going to be you got one of those coming up in Fresno, right? Yeah. And that that one's is July eighth. July eighth. So she's not only does she have these teen seminars, these out of control teen seminars coming up in Virginia on the fourteenth and the sixteenth. So if you happen to be in Virginia, you should check this out at postinstitute.com. But if you sign up for the, the two day intensive or the certified instructor class then you can come for free to her to her um, team presentation in Fresno on July 8th. You get all that information on the website. So again, that code is GBB Intensive 147. I'd hate for you guys to miss this out, especially if you're in California. There will be other events throughout the country if you're if you don't have a chance to get there. But this is an excellent seminar. I mean, people are lots of great feedback and lots of breakthroughs happening, so really encourage it. Yeah, we've been having then, a lot of fun. And if anybody um, has any difficulties with any of this, they're more than welcome to email me at Helene, H-E-L-E-N-E, -E, at postinstitute.com. 
perfect. So that's Helene's address. If you have any questions about signing up for the class or the certification, you can email her at Helene, H-E-L-E-N-E, -E, at postinstitute.com. Hang on, I'll just write that down for you. Helene at postinstitute.com. All right. Let me see. I'm trying to look here. Okay, here's a here's a question. There is a healthy balance between reactivity and responsibility. If you don't correct children when they are young, the authorities will when they are of age, and they always say the parents didn't raise them right. They don't put responsibility on the child. It's always put back on the parent. Uh, you know, that that's a good comment, but the reality is, is when you start talking about the authorities correcting them, then who's the responsibility being put back on? It's actually being put on the child. And, and, and so, you know, we have to think about, it, it's not about reactivity, because reactivity is unconscious and it's fear-based. So if you're freaking out and screaming at your child or yelling at them or consequencing them, that's not taking responsibility. That's being reactive. And when you're being reactive, that's all you're teaching your child is reactive. What I'm trying to say here is that you have to be responsible. So there's a way to engage your child and to take responsibility and to correct them and to guide them and to teach them. That's the definition of discipline. Not to punish, but to teach. That's taking responsibility. The shepherd has to shepherd his herd. He doesn't go out and beat his sheep. He has to shepherd them. So we think about spoil the, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. Well, that's, that's a complete um, misunderstanding of the Bible. Spare the rod, spoil the child. The rod and the staff are used in the raising of sheep. The rod is used to guide. The, the staff is used to pull them back in the line when they stray. The rod, the rod is not used by the shepherd to beat the sheep over the head. What can you imagine? How many of you... Who are, who are believers, would, would like to have been thumped on your head every time you've done something you weren't supposed to have been done today by God? What if God came down and thumped you on your head because you messed up? Well, see, that's not how it works. All right, God is the good shepherd. He leads us, he, he guides us, and he gives us an example. So we, we really have to, to look at this, this, this our, 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 the way we think about how we deal with our children. There's a different in, There's a difference in correcting a child versus punishing a child. If it's going to create more stress, I'm telling you, it's not going to help them to heal. And the authorities, what do the authorities do? They do nothing more than create more stress. That's why we have more prisons than we do colleges. That's why I got kids right now who've been in the system for since they were eight years old. I get them when they're 16. They've been in juvenile detention. They know nothing. They know nothing at all. I've got, I've got three kids right now who've been in the system for anywhere from six to eight years, and these kids can barely read and write. Right? So what's the authorities going to do? They're not going to teach your child anything. So we, we not only have to embrace responsibility, but we've got to embrace it passionately, and we've got to be able to get beyond our fear-based, reactivities, which is all about our fear. Anytime you want to punish your child, anytime you want to, you want to discipline them harshly in the name of, of getting them to do right and getting them to grow up, then you're missing it. You're missing it because it's not going to work because we've been doing it for generations. We've got to bring more love into this formula of parenting. And guess what? Love is not easy. Okay, this parenting approach is not easy. All right, when your child messes up, it is darn scary. It is terrifying sometimes to see them making that mistake. But for you to get upset and get stressed out with them isn't going to make it any better. You've got to be able to deal with your own upset. You've got to be able to deal with your own feelings. And then you've got to be able to go to them in a reflective way. And you can be passionate about, them, about it. And you can be upset about it. And you can express yourself. But you've got to be able to maintain relationship. And you've got to be able to teach your child oxytocin. That's taking responsibility. You start thinking about consequences. Now, see, now you're fixing to get me on, on this, this soapbox. We start talking about consequences with children. All right, what, when you give a child a consequence, a consequence is a reaction to an action. You don't just, none of you are going to get off the phone. after. You're not going to get off the phone or walk away from your computer and walk up to your child and make them go outside and run laps or make them do jumping jacks or tell them they're going to miss a meal for no reason at all. 
Okay, that's because a consequence is not a response to an action, it is a reaction to an action. So if a consequence is really a reaction to an action, then what are you teaching your child? Because children learn 80 to 90 percent of the time through modeling. So when you go and give that child that consequence, what are you really teaching that child? And I'm talking about consequences in the vein of how we are commonly taught them, really common love and logic, very common in schools, natural consequences. You can't teach a child a natural consequence. You can't give a child a natural consequence because the natural consequence is natural. So there's nothing you can do. You can't prevent it. You can't stop it. You can't give it. It's a natural consequence. That means it happens naturally. And we learn through natural consequences, but usually it takes lots and lots of repetition. So you, you forget about this whole thing about natural consequence. You can't teach someone a natural consequence. What we learn are parent-formulated consequences. And when you give your child this parent-formulated consequence, you're not teaching your child responsibility. You're teaching your child reactivity. So you want to raise a child who's reactive, be reactive towards them. You want to raise a child who's responsible, be responsible. And remember, as children, you're planting seeds. And those seeds are not going to blossom until you hit adolescence. They're not going to bloom until you hit adolescence. And they're not going to fully blossom until your child moves into adulthood. So you're planting seeds right now. Every moment, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, you are in relationship. Every year that you're loving your child, every time you see your child through a problem behavior, you're planting a seed that you're not going to see bloom until they reach adulthood. That's when you know that you've done your job right, when they reach adulthood. That's when you know that you've done the best that you could. And if you've done the best that you could, when they reach adulthood, they're going to still have to go through their trials and tribulations because we all have to. I have to go through trials and tribulations as an adult every single day. You're not going to be able to prevent that. You've got to be there, and, and your child has to know that you're a secure base, you're a relationship that they can always depend on, that they can always come back and they can recover, they can regroup, and then they can go out and tackle the world again. When they've reached adulthood and you know that you've done the best you've done, that you bust you possibly could, that you've given as much love, as much commitment, as much dedication, that you worked as hard as you could to overcome fear in your own life and to prevent fear from driving your child and your relationship with your child, then then you're going to be able to look and you're going to be able to be content as a parent and you're going to know that you taught your child responsibility. But you, you know, turn it over to the authorities. You're only going to be turn, turning it over to the authorities and, and that's only going to be able to cre be creating more stress and fear. So be passionate. Be loving. Take responsibility. Look at the definition of responsibility. Okay, study what it means to be responsible. Stop living these same old patterns, these same ingrained stories of fear and reactivity. That has got to change. That has got to stop. And I'm, I'm going to say this. This quote here says, because oxytocin is also the chemical of love and connection, when we love and, and have affection in our lives, we tend not to be chronically stressed. Love not only makes us happy, it makes us healthy too. By means of oxytocin, love heals. If you've got a child who's been traumatized, you want to know what's going to heal that child? Love. That's the only thing that's going to heal that child. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. And the more, the more love you can bring into your own heart, the more you can alleviate fear out of your own soul, out of your own spirit, out of your own mind, out of your own body, the more love you're going to bring into your relationship with your child. And let me say this, in any given moment, any given moment, we all have two choices. We can continue to operate from the same old stories of fear, the same old stories of blame, the same old stories of shame and threatening. We can continue to do that. We can choose to operate out of those ingrained patterns and those messages, generations and generations of messages, and slave mentality. We can choose to do that, or we can choose love. Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us.